In the not-too-distant future, Earth suffers a slow demise, its resources slowly drained by human hands. Cooper, a former military pilot, finds solace in a humble existence on a farm where he resides with his two children and elderly father-in-law. Yet their crops wither and falter under the weight of environmental shifts. One morning, hoping to spend some quality time together, Cooper and his family eagerly attend a baseball game. However, their fun time is abruptly ended by a sweeping sandstorm that blankets the entire town. With a sense of urgency, they quickly return home, putting on masks and goggles to shield themselves from the oppressing sandstorm. Amidst the chaos, Cooper orders his family to ensure that every window of their house is securely closed, safeguarding their home from the relentless wind. Frantically realizing that she had forgotten to close the library window, Murph rushes up the stairs, her father close behind. To their astonishment, they discover a peculiar phenomenon, where the dust on the floor arranges itself in an unusual pattern. Convinced that a ghost is at play, Murph persists in her belief that a mischievous poltergeist is responsible. Once the storm subsides, Murph discovers her father seated on the library floor, fixated on the enigmatic lines formed by the dust. Joining him, she listens as he explains that the anomaly isn't a result of supernatural forces, but rather the workings of gravity. After deliberate contemplation spanning several hours, Cooper unravels the truth that the lines represent binary codes encoding specific coordinates. With the GPS coordinates dialed in, Cooper follows the directions along with his daughter, brimming with anticipation. However, their arrival at the designated location leaves them surprised as they stumble upon an active NASA base, contrary to their belief that it had been shut down alongside the military. After being taken into the compound and detained for a few minutes, they are introduced to Amelia, who leads them into a room teeming with diligent researchers including her father, whom Cooper already knows from his time as a pilot. Guided by Professor Brand, Cooper is granted a tour of their secret facility. His eyes widen as he takes in the immense spacecraft they have been tirelessly constructing and the groundbreaking research they have undertaken. Professor Brand explains the grim reality that even the corn they have managed to cultivate will soon wither away. He reveals the dire situation that Earth is hurtling towards complete inhospitability for humankind. As a result, they dispatch teams into outer space, seeking a new haven for humanity. Humanity. Seizing the opportunity to rally Cooper's involvement, the professor extends a proposition of great magnitude as he offers him the chance to lead the mission, emphasizing that it could be his family's salvation. Overwhelmed by the weight of this decision, Cooper finds himself at a crossroads. Moments later, Cooper is escorted back to the meeting hall. They disclose the existence of a wormhole that materialized near Saturn almost five decades prior. This enigmatic passage holds the promise of a different galaxy, one with habitable worlds. Revealing the intricacies of the launching station, the professor explains his groundbreaking work on a gravity equation which is an innovation that bears the potential to rescue humanity by facilitating the transportation of vast populations from Earth. With unwavering determination, the professor assures Cooper that, upon his return, the problem will have been solved, instilling a glimmer of hope amidst the uncertain existence. Back at their house, Murph is devastated when her father makes the heart-wrenching decision to go on the mission. As Cooper bids farewell to his family, he heads back to NASA, resolute on the quest to discover a habitable planet for the sake of Earth's inhabitants. Accompanied by three fellow crew members and helped by the presence of two AI computers, Cooper bravely launches into space, successfully departing from Earth. With precision and skill, they now navigate the vast expanse, ultimately docking at a strategically positioned orbiting station. As they step foot inside the station, a symphony of artificial gravity and oxygen envelops them, providing a semblance of familiarity. The group then settles in, gathering around with anticipation, ready to receive a message left behind by Professor Brand. Their hearts heavy with emotion, they brace themselves for the imminent entry into a deep slumber, which is a stasis state that will carry them through the vastness of time. Eighteen months drift by, and the ship steadily approaches the awe-inspiring presence of Saturn. The crew is roused from their deep sleep, their senses reawakened 
awakening to the reality that lies before them. Eagerly, Cooper checks the accumulated messages, yearning for a connection with his beloved Murph. However, disappointment washes over him as he finds no correspondence from her. With a sense of urgency, the team receives crucial information. They will approach the revered wormhole in a mere three hours. The crew readies themselves, securing their positions within the vessel. Navigating through the passage, they bear witness to the distortion of space and time, the very fabric of reality bending and warping around them. In a matter of minutes, the ship emerges from the other side of the wormhole, revealing their successful arrival in the uncharted galaxy. With a shared sense of awe and wonder, the crew gathers to discuss the planets that had been earmarked as potential havens based on data transmitted by previous expeditions. Among the multitude of options, two planets stand out, both orbiting a colossal black hole whose immense gravitational pull would significantly alter the passage of time compared to Earth. He tells them that for every hour spent on one of these planets, seven years would elapse back on Earth. Faced with the prospect of losing precious decades, Cooper resolves to devise a plan that sacrifices a portion of their fuel, but maximizes their time-saving potential in the long run. With unanimous agreement, Romilly opts to remain aboard the ship while Cooper, Doyle, and Amelia descend to retrieve the crucial findings left by the original team led by Miller. Navigating through the treacherous gravitational pull, Cooper skillfully guides the small ship to a safe landing. Amelia and Doyle disembark, venturing into the vast ocean to recover Miller's beacon. However, their hopes are shattered as they discover only the wreckage of Miller's ship. Suddenly, a looming sight commands their attention as an enormous menacing wave hurtles towards them. Filled with urgency, Cooper orders his teammates to quickly retreat, their mission incomplete. Although Amelia makes her way back to the ship, Doyle is swept away by the relentless waves, his crew helpless to save him. A sense of grief and loss permeates the atmosphere as they mourn their fallen friend. The ship's adaptive design saves them from being submerged, allowing them to float atop the towering wave until it subsides. However, the engines remain inoperable, incapacitated by the presence of water that needs to drain completely before they can be ignited again. Fueled by anger and grief, Cooper directs his frustration towards Amelia, blaming her for disregarding his warning and holding her responsible for the tragic loss of their teammates. To escape the gravitational field of the planet and avoid wasting precious time, they must endure an additional hour on the planet's surface, which will exact a heavy toll of decades back on Earth. As tension mounts, another menacing wave looms on the horizon, leaving Cooper with no choice but to ignite the engines prematurely, racing against the imminent danger to secure their escape. Upon their return to the mothership, they are greeted by the aged figure of Romilly. He reveals that they had been gone for 23 years. Overwhelmed with a mix of emotions, Cooper retreats to the transmission room where he watches accumulated messages left by his family. Tears well up in his eyes as he witnesses his son growing up, starting a family, and ultimately resigning himself to the assumption of Cooper's death. The final transmission awaiting Cooper is one from his daughter, and with a heavy heart, she reveals that it is her birthday, and she has now reached the age at which Cooper was when he had left. Meanwhile, back on Earth, Murph has followed in her father's footsteps, dedicating herself to the cause of NASA and assisting Professor Brand in his quest to ensure humanity's survival. Just a few hours after Murph sends the heartfelt transmission to her father, she receives the crushing news that Professor Brand is very ill and is lying on his deathbed. In a profound moment of truth, Professor Brand reaches out to Murph, offering his sincerest apologies for the web of lies he had spun over the years. He reveals the painful reality that the gravitational equation, which he had claimed to be close to solving, had eluded him. His only remaining hope had been that Cooper's mission would succeed, allowing them to repopulate the newfound planet with the fertilized eggs they had entrusted to the ship. With his final words spoken, Bran passes away, leaving Murph to struggle with the weight of his revelations and the uncertain future ahead. As the crew regroups on the ship, they realize they have depleted a significant amount of fuel during their time on the planet. Amelia passionately advocates for the planet where her former love interest, astronaut Edmonds, had landed. However, Cooper and Romilly opt to prioritize man's planet 
due to the strong signal emanating from it. Upon reaching man's planet, they descend in their compact shuttle, precisely targeting the source of the active transmission. Inside a constructed pod, they discover man in a state of stasis, and they revive him from his long slumber. Overwhelmed by the sight of fellow humans after years of isolation, man finds solace in embracing Cooper. Soon after, Mon begins to share intricate details about the planet and the expeditions he has undertaken in recent years. Engrossed in conversation, their exchange is interrupted by a transmission from Murph, delivering a devastating revelation. She informs them of the professor's demise and reveals the truth that all the work and sacrifices had been based on a deceptive foundation. The mission's purpose was not to save humanity on Earth, but to establish a new colony in a distant world. Cooper and Amelia stand dumbfounded, grappling with the earth-shattering revelation that man and Romilly had already known. The sense of betrayal is obvious as they realize they have been deceived and robbed of precious time that could have been spent with their loved ones. Fueled by a burning desire to reunite with his children, Cooper decides he will return to Earth. Before preparing to depart, Cooper asks Man to show him the locations of the stage props and the site where he had set up the distillery. Suspicion and caution loom in the air as they make their way toward these destinations. Suddenly, Man's true nature emerges as he attempts to murder Cooper, callously pushing him off a treacherous cliff. It becomes evident that man had fabricated the planet's viability to sustain life. Locked in a desperate struggle for survival, Cooper and Man fight tooth and nail, ultimately resulting in Man cracking Cooper's helmet, leaving him stranded, gasping for air. Summoning his last reserves of strength, Cooper miraculously locates the long-distance transmitter that Man had torn from his suit and initiates a distress call to Amelia. Responding swiftly to his plea for help, Amelia commandeers the shuttle and races to his location, rescuing him from the brink of death. Once safely retrieved, Cooper discloses to Amelia the extent of man's deception, enlightening her about the true nature of the planet. Determined to alert Romilly, they strive to establish contact with man's camp. Tragically, their efforts prove futile as they see Man activate a booby-trapped explosion he had orchestrated, leading to the untimely death of Romilly during his attempt to revive the abandoned astronaut's decommissioned robot. Seizing the grounded ranger, Man desperately attempts to reach the mothership. However, an explosion engulfs him during his manual docking attempt, sending the ship careening into a chaotic spin. With their only means of escape teetering on the edge, Cooper's resourcefulness kicks into high gear. He formulates a daring plan to synchronize their ship's spin with that of the mothership, ultimately managing to successfully dock and avert a catastrophe. Once safely aboard the Endurance, Cooper conceives a brilliant strategy to harness the power of the Ranger, utilizing it as a slingshot around the immense black hole. This audacious maneuver will propel the Endurance toward the third planet, the source of Edmund's signal. Knowing they lack sufficient resources for both himself and the robot companion, he detaches himself and one of the robots from their respective rangers, allowing them to plunge into the depths of the black hole. Overwhelmed by intense speeds and swirling particles, Cooper's ranger is engulfed in flames, compelling him to eject from the disintegrating vessel. Adrift within the wormhole, Cooper finds himself cascading into a multidimensional expanse where time becomes malleable. In this ethereal realm, he gazes his daughter from behind the bookshelf in their old home, frozen in time, just as she was when he started his journey. He realizes the ghost his daughter had perceived was his desperate attempt to reach out to her across the fabric of existence. Harnessing the extraordinary power of gravity within this realm, Cooper manipulates the surroundings of the room, utilizing Morse code to send a message to his daughter. Suddenly, a three-dimensional construct has materialized within its five-dimensional reality, bridging the gap between time and physicality. Cooper realizes the future descendants of humanity, capable of navigating the intricacies of five dimensions, have engineered this extraordinary space as a conduit for him to transmit messages from the past. Armed with this knowledge, Cooper seizes the opportunity, employing Morse code on his daughter's watch, to convey the crucial information she needs to decipher the elusive gravity equation. There, she realizes her father, who had been communicating with her all along, across the boundaries of time and space. Empowered by this revelation, she harnesses the information imparted by her father to unlock the key to saving 
humanity, charting a course toward a brighter future for all on Earth. Meanwhile, Cooper lets himself go adrift and awakens to find himself in a hospital bed. Surprised, he asks about his whereabouts, and they inform him that he is on the Cooper Station, an arc that carries the entirety of humanity toward their new home. The news arrives that his daughter, though aged, is still alive and will be visiting him in a matter of days. Finally, the moment arrives and he enters the hospital room to find her surrounded by her children and grandchildren. Tears flow freely as they embrace, a powerful testament to the enduring bond between father and daughter. Murph, recognizing the fragility of life, advises Cooper to seek out Amelia. Taking Murph's advice to heart, Cooper boards one of the newly developed aircraft and goes out to find Amelia. In the new world they have reached, Amelia discovers the lifeless body of Edmonds. With reverence, she lays him to rest. Removing her helmet, she breathes in the revitalizing air filled with hope and determination, aware that she holds the potential to forge a fresh beginning for all of humanity. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our recap. Like the video and subscribe to our channel for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.